Hey there, my fellow woodworkers. Uh, I wanted to show you a project that I've been working on. Um, this is my CNC table saw. This is iteration number two. The first one that I had was uh, really just kind of thrown together. I have a video of it on uh, YouTube um, using an old Craftsman uh, saw and uh, the different types of uh, linear motion for the, the fence and the blade raise and the blade tilt. Uh, this one's a little bit more refined, uh, so I just kind of wanted to do a walkthrough and show you what I came up with. Uh, so I'm using a 10-inch contractor saw by SawStop, and I've done everything bolt-on application. You don't have to drill into the saw. You don't have to add any holes or... Um, screw anything to it uh, as far as uh, making new holes or anything like that. Everything just bolts in to existing uh, bolt hole locations. That way you don't have to worry about void and warranty. Nothing uh, damages the saw. It still functions 100% the way it's supposed to. Uh, and you get the added functionality of CNC controls. So give you a, a little walk down of the upgrades that I've done. So the first upgrade is a uh, a crosscut sled that I built into the into the table saw itself. So uh, this is on linear rails, so it can travel quite a ways. It'll have a fence that mounts across the front here, uh, that bolts on and then comes across to the to the blade, so that you can use this as a crosscut sled. This way, you don't have the thickness of an actual crosscut sled that takes away from how much you can cut, how, how deep of a cut you can make. Uh, this will have a lockout on it so that you can lock it so that it doesn't move. It will come into a position and, and then just lock in that position. This table saw is not finished, so forgive me for the uh, unfinished nature of it. So uh, just to let you know about that. Uh, the controls are down here on the left-hand side. Uh, there is a control box that has the motion controller, uh, all of the stepper drivers, power supply, and then I have a little mini computer that runs the CNC software. The fence is got a linear actuator both in the front and in the back. Uh, this helps to keep the fence parallel to the blade, makes it very rigid without having to have a large... Uh, surface area in the front here uh, to keep the the fence parallel to the blade. Uh, kind of like uh, if you look at a, a Biesmeyer uh, fence, you have a really wide uh, angle on the front here. So when you lock it down, it really locks that fence into place and it's very rigid so that it can't move. Uh, I wanted this to be lightweight. I wanted it to be uh, very compact so it doesn't stick out you can you can see on the side here it doesn't stick out very far uh, it only comes out about 29 inches here um, you can do 29 inch cut with this but the way that i have this set up you'd be able to move the fence back and you'll be able to get a 48 inch wide cut with it the blade raise and the blade tilt are controlled with NEMA 23 stepper motors that have about 480 uh, inch ounces of torque on both both of these axes here and again bolt-on application all you had to do is just take the uh, the handle off and then this coupler bolts in place this motor gets bolted down to the um, cabinet that I built below it and this motor gets bolted on uh, it's actually uh, mounted to the shaft itself that raises the blade uh, but then there's a a uh, piece of uh, aluminum that goes back into a bolt that normally holds the angle indicator. Uh, then I took that bolt out and mounted this bracket to it, and that keeps this from, from rotating and turning so you can get an accurate uh, uh, measurement on the blade raise. Everything is run with a 10-inch touchscreen monitor. And the software that I'm running is UCCNC. And the way that I've done this screen set, I made a custom screen set. You don't have to have a, um, a keyboard or a mouse. You don't have to enter any G code. You just type in the distance that you wanna move. And then you type the axis or you touch the axis 
that you want to move the distance. It has jog controls, so you can jog not only the fence, but also the blade raise and blade tilt. And then there's also uh, one for the router when I get the router in there. So this is actually going to have a router made uh, built into the, the right-hand side here that you'll be able to use the back side of the fence for that router. And that'll also be controlled with these controls. Uh, this also has memory. So once you get, if you're going to be doing a lot of repetitive cuts, you can go ahead and get the blade raise, the blade tilt, and the fence to the position you want, and then just go ahead and set one of the memory positions, and then you can go back to that position anytime. And the repeatability is within a thousandth of an inch, so uh, you don't have to worry about whether or not you got it exactly where it was. It takes care of it for you. So that's kind of the walk around. Now I'll go ahead and show you a little bit of the, uh, the actual functionality of it. So uh, you home everything by um, hitting this home wall. So when you hit the home wall, everything moves uh, down to a home position. There's limit switches uh, that are uh, in the home position so that it knows exactly where everything is at. Once everything gets to the home position, then the saw is ready to go ahead and use. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll set the blade angle to zero and we'll put the blade height to zero and we'll leave the fence where it's at. So I've left the cover off of the fence or off of the uh, blade so you can see how the blade moves. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and we'll uh, move the blade up to you know, two inches. So you just hit the number two, it populates in this field up here and then we hit the uh, DRO of the axis that we want to move, which is going to be the blade height. So when we hit that, you can see the blade moves where it's supposed to. Same thing if we want to go to, say, 15 degrees. Type in 15, hit the blade angle, and you can see that the blade moves. And then again, with the, um, uh, the fence, so we can go ahead and say we want the fence to be at 8 inches. Just type in the eight and then hit fence and it moves no i don't want to close it moves to the location of eight inches now to kind of show you the repeatability of this i have a key here so you can see that the fence is at eight inches so if i put this key on edge right up against that fence you can kind of see how it is. So I can move this fence off to say, we'll go to 15 inches. And you can see that the key is still standing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move it back to eight inches. So I just, I'm just gonna type in eight, but then I'll go ahead and zoom in here I'll just go ahead and move to this point right here so you can see the key. Moves right back to the position that it was at. So it's got very good repeatability. And um, that way you can use these memory buttons to uh, set the position where you want. And then it'll go to those memory positions. There's eight of them. And uh, they work very well. In fact, I think... I have this set from a previous um, uh, run that I did, and so if I hit this number one, it moves to the zero position. So I actually didn't have it set. Uh, everything goes to zero if uh, you don't have anything set. So uh, we can go ahead and do that really quick. So let's go ahead and move the fence to uh, 10 inches. And we'll move the blade to two inches and uh, 15 degrees. And then we'll go ahead and we'll set memory position number one. And then we can go ahead and change the fence to say 20 inches. And we'll lower the blade to one and a half inches. Now it's going to make a noise because this is common for saw stops to make a groaning noise when you lower the blade 
because the um, the the all the threaded rod that they use it's a really big threaded rod, but the top of that threaded rod is not supported. It's just supported by the bottom, so the top can kind of vibrate. So it gets this harmonic vibration in it uh, when you lower it. So I I'm still working on a fix for that, but anyhow, you'll hear it here in just a second. So it makes that groaning noise, um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll move the. Um, the uh, angle to, let's say, uh, we'll go 30 degrees angle. So then we can go ahead and we can set position number two. And now number two has been set. And it'll actually tell you right here. So it shows you that memory button to set. Uh, so it, it kind of gives you a little bit of a feedback there and lets you know what you've done. So we have number one set and number two set. So if we go ahead and we want to go back to that first uh, um, position that we had, we just hit the button number one and everything moves exactly to that position. And then you can go back to position number two. So there's eight of those buttons that you can use, uh, for that. And that's the saw pretty much. That's the rundown. Uh, if, uh, anybody has any comments, questions, suggestions, um, anything like that, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, if you have a question, uh, I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can. Uh, so uh, anyhow, that's my, uh, my CNC build. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.